I'm Dean Hill, and this is Gallery of the Hills. Welcome. My first visit to the beaver pond was in mid-September and what I saw there was so interesting and it was just the beginning of the fall. The, I think the water stressed out a lot of the trees and made the curl, colors come out early so I have decided that I'm going to keep going back to this maybe every week or so and see what the progression is. And one week led to another week, which led to another week, all the way till the end of the October and about six different trips to this area. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is show you a few images that got me started with the uh, abstract and the surreal Im uh, photographs. Uh, these were taken over the course of several years. This was this one's at the gorge on the Red River, just a early fall scene. This one named Cold, as you can see on the frozen ice, it's uh, on Paint Creek, which is just down from where I live. And uh, to me, that describes uh, the surreal, the cold, the I, I think of shivering when I see this image. Abstract of an old tree taken on a, just a nameless stream uh, where I live. Water was low, the lighting was perfect, and for some reason, the old tree just sticks out at me on that one. Here's a gorge shot on Indian Creek at Red River Gorge, uh, early fall. The leaves had just fallen on the top of the water, so you get a you get kind of an image with depth to it as well as just the surface of the stream. And this image from uh, Red River Gorge is looking into an autumn stream. It's a uh, Difficult to make out the reflection and the reality in it, and it's one of my favorites from that area. Another one is looking through the autumn stream. Uh, this is another meld of the abstract and the surreal because you're not really sure what's happening. Where is the real tree? Where's the reflection? And where is the bottom of the stream? This came from the beaver pond where uh, my project took place. Uh, this is the one that got me interested in going back to it. And I've made that a focus of my project this fall is uh, capturing the beauty of this pond. One more is from the Paint Creek area of the upper reaches of Paintsville Lake. It's an early morning shot in the winter time. You got an icy stream and you got the reflection of the mountains being lit up by the sun in the, in the background. Okay, this has been my playground for the fall. This makes trip number probably six or seven that I've been here. We've had some flooding. Most of the color's gone, but it's a challenge to see what I can come up with. We're going to look at maybe some black and white. 
maybe just a little touch of color. This is the K Run Light. Great place to be. There's wildlife ponds all over the place. This is mainly beaver. They plugged it up. There used to be a stream right there. And uh, a few small ponds, but I think the beavers took the liberty to plug up a culvert uh, down this way, and now they've moved in on us. Now, what I'm looking at, we're going to get the camera out, we're going to look at just a few little touches of color. Uh, it's going to be a challenge here today because I'm going to have to shoot into the light quite a bit. The water's gone up about, uh, oh, about a foot and a half of what it was, so I'm limited to where I can go. That's all right, it's a good place to play anyway. My reflections on the edge uh, week one is when I first showed up just to see what was there after a couple of years of not being there. Uh, we'll start out with something you have to be aware of in that part of the world is Lots of poison ivy, but it was such a neat color, I thought I'd have to capture that just as a opening. Now we start getting into the reflection. This one is just a bunch of leaves in the water, yet the refraction around the edges of the leaf break up the black and white image of the old tree reflecting. Uh, upon closer notice, you will see the edges of the leaf doing that, and it just it turns it into a completely abstract sort of picture. Uh, when I'm photographing, I have to anticipate. In order to do that, I've got to be there at the, in the moment, so to speak. Sometimes I'll get in a hurry, I want to rush in to a place and try to photograph it all quick because I see so many things going on. But on this one, I have to stop, take a few breaths, maybe even set up my tripod and just look around, lean on the tripod, not even worry about taking a picture. Then they start popping out at me, just like this one. Another thing I have to look for is the light. You got a you got an early morning. I'm, a, I'm an early morning person, by the way. The early morning light coming in, uh, it will. You think you've really got it, but sometimes you have to sit there and wait and something like this will happen. You'll get lighting coming on the trunks of the old tree, and that just happens for just an instant, for a few seconds, then it goes back to that again. So you gotta be aware of that. You gotta observe. Look around, take your time, look around at uh, what's going on, and enjoy it, have fun. That's the main thing. So. Look for the abstract, look for the black and whites. Don't necessarily have to keep your camera straight up and down. Tilt your camera, play with the image, play with the angles. Uh, everyone's got their little screen, the LCD screen on the back of your camera. Take time to look at it, look at what you're shooting. And this place, which is a very busy place, you have to watch about getting unwanted branches or tree trunks or things in it that will mess up your image. So don't be afraid to shoot if you can. Here you've got just bursts of color sticking out. In the early mornings, you're going to have richer colors, especially if it's a little bit damp or wet, that will make the reds and the golds pop out. Now this was 
mid-September when I started week one, mid-September, and you get a really nice light coming through. And it makes a mirror-like image of what I was looking at. This is a closer up one. I zoomed in on this one, mainly because of the reds. The reds and the greens kind of intersperse of each other. They complement each other. And you got the light, the soft light on the trunk of the old tree. Uh, this is where you start wondering. I, I, like, uh, I like an image, by the way, that makes your eyes dance across the image. It will go searching and looking and back again because there's so much going on. This, this the beaver pond is a very busy place to begin with. And uh, it's a great place to take advantage of that. A busy picture is going to be a good picture. Been, I've been doing this for over 20 years, uh, mainly landscapes, close-ups, nature. Yeah, sometimes you reach a plateau or you start getting a little bit burned out. I think it's where the reflection shots have come in. It's, uh, it's a whole different direction. I'm uh, working with the surreal, the abstract. Uh, I'm working with colors and I'm coming up with whole different pieces of art. My work doesn't even look like nature until you take a closer look. So what I've gotten here today, you're going to find out it's a lot of burst of color. You're going to get a lot of shapes. You're going to get a lot of uh, shadows, reflections. I'm shooting dark on some. I'm shooting light on others. But that's okay. It's going to come out as a like a piece of art rather than a landscape itself. Week two, I decided to go to the opposite side of the pond uh, and check that edge out and look at things that I was photographing the week before. Ended up having to do a lot of bushwhacking. So uh, I got into a spot where I couldn't move around much, but I did manage to get some nice images. Oh, uh, this one is, is a wall of color, really busy, got a lot of trees in it, but it keeps you looking through the image just to see what's going on with it. Now, the uh, willows, they were just starting to turn color a little bit. And I really like the delicate, intricate details of the leaves of the willow tree. And we had a, I had a soft reflection, so I got to play with that. In fact, I ended up taking several pictures of it. This one I backed off a little bit. I got a nice little tree trunk in the foreground to kind of make you have to look and skip over to see the rest of the image and a busy background to it. But it doesn't hurt the image. It makes it actually uh, gives you that wilderness effect. Here I pulled in a little bit tighter and put in some of the reds, shifting my position slightly. But still, I had to take my time. I had to look. And scout this out. Shot a vertical of it. Uh, I think it's an old habit is I'll shoot horizontals and I'll try to find a vertical image of the same thing. Sometimes it will say more than the horizontal or vice versa.
I'm going to look around. I don't get in a hurry. Sometimes it's good to just take a few good breaths of this fresh air out here. I'm away from civilization. I'm away from bugs. I'm away from politics. All it is just me, the birds. I hear some crows in the background. Okay, we got a little breeze on the water. And if I shoot that just right, I got the hood on to keep that sunlight from messing me up. But well, I'm going to take a shot. And it's a test shot. Keep playing about digital on the screen here. I can check it out. See what we got. And, and hey, that looks better than I thought. I shoot dark. I like to shoot a dark picture. I don't know if that's because I'm moody or what, but... And I especially like this camera. It's got a joystick on it for moving my spot focus. I spot focus. All the time. I pick out... This landscape has just a few touches of color on it. My f-stop, I got it the number of... 16 right now, but uh, I got the spot focus on a red leaf, and I backed off a little bit. I'm shooting about a thirtieth of a second. Okay, this is week three. Uh, it's toward the end of September. Uh, should be about the peak of the colors. I do a lot of spot focusing in this one. Uh, I really enjoy my spot focus on my camera because I can just zoom in to exactly what I want, get it in focus, and everything else is secondary. I do uh, shoot with an f-stop high, like old 12, 13, so I get a longer depth of field. Uh, I shoot my reflections at different speeds. I, I manual control it so that sometimes I can freeze the ripples. Sometimes I can let them blend in and make them soft and slightly out of focus, especially if I got something in the foreground that's in focus, like a leaf or a twig or a tree trunk. Uh, now I'm coming upon uh, the water that's got some slight breeze blowing across and it makes the ripples blend the colors together. Again, it's a busy picture, but we get a lot of color. And if, it's, if the water is slow, and quiet, you're having trouble telling the reality from the abstract or the non-real, so it's fun to play with that. I've got uh, some images where I just let the reflection be secondary and I zoom in, spot focus on my main subject and frame it with whatever happens to be in the foreground usually tree trunks or vines or the colors. Uh, and times I will shoot the reflections only and that's the colors reflecting down. The light is usually coming in at a side lighting or behind me. My red maple, I like red maples because the reds kind of give it an oriental feel. Uh, it's a real busy photograph, yet the, the maple tree makes it work real well. Now we're getting into playing some. This is a close-up of uh, an old dead tree. Got leaves all over the place. You got tree trunks. If your eyes dance over the image, keep looking back and forth, up and down, then I consider 
the photography success because it's it's playing with your mind a little bit. This is another shot of the same tree trunk, only I backed off. It doesn't work quite as well, but yet it's it's almost two images blended into one. The right side with the tree trunks, the left side with the old dead tree, but it all comes in together uh, in the same photo. And I shoot a vertical. I like to shoot a vertical occasionally, and it ties in colors that you normally don't see in the horizontals. Now we're getting into a, a larger landscape. It's got a different aspect of looking at that red maple, but this one brings in another element. The uh, uh, things, animals live, oops, live in this area. And there's a tree in the foreground that the beavers have been working on, a beaver tree. And there were several trees that way, and there were several homes and slides where the beaver lived that we came across. Now we go across the lake to another image. This is farther on down. Uh, it was out on a point, and I call this the Taj. It reminded me of the Taj Mahal with a near perfect reflection and the shape of it. You have to use your imagination a little bit, but to me it looks like the Taj Mahal, or at least in my mind. So that's the fun part. I make it up, make it do whatever I want. Okay, when you, you think you've got the perfect image of the Taj Mahal that you want, along comes something that makes a splash right in the foreground of your picture, and you got this one. Now, you be the judge. Do you like it perfectly clear reflection pool or one that's got a little action in it? That's up to you. Now we got another landscape that's a busy one. It's got a lot of the tree trunks in again, but it's a different part of the pond. And uh, by the way, the sides, the edges were full of this. Lots of little landscapes, uh, lots of color, lots of busyness, yet it all seemed to work. Doesn't hurt to occasionally look down. You're going to see some leaves, just one or two or three, or uh, silhouettes of some branches. And this is the one I got, this single uh, sweet gum leaf. But if you look closely, around the edge of it, you'll see the distortion from the light, and that makes it a much more interesting photograph. This is going back to the lower part of the Taj Mahal reflection. I went back to that later. Sometimes I'll backtrack. I like to do that, and I also like, I think I mentioned earlier, spot focus. Well, this was on a perfectly calm water and we got this reflection of the foreground. Along comes a slight breeze, and you get something totally different. Just the breeze lasted only seconds, yet it changed the image entirely. Now this is uh, basically a, a gray color photograph, except in the middle is uh, a willow tree that is uh, slightly, <coughs> slightly changing into the fall colors. They're real intricate trees. So I, I enjoy shooting those. Back to a landscape. This has got a lot of depth into it. You can see by the tree trunks all the way back to the horizon line. There's nice reflections. You get a little bit of sky in this one. Normally I don't shoot sky reflections unless it does something positive for the photograph. If it's a nice deep blue color, sometimes I'll include it. Uh, often I'll try to leave it out and just put the image only minus the sky in. Here's another one, and it's a different direction. It's got my red maple in it. 
touch of color, kind of an oriental feel to it. I think you, if you look at a lot of scroll paintings, uh, say uh, from the China, the old paintings, you'll see a lot of red in theirs. They like the color red, so do I. This one is a fun one. Kind of difficult to find the horizon line. It's kind of difficult to divide between what's real, what's abstract, and what's a reflection. Uh, so you got to study this one. This was a fun one. And uh, reflection goes all the way back into the picture. Take a good hard look at this one. That was the end of week three. That was uh, some of the best photography so far with color, with light, with reflections. Now we're going into week four, which goes on into October. Probably the first third of October, the 10th or 12th, something like that. Mm -hmm. getting my reflection shots or any shots actually is I got to be in the moment I got to be here in the nature I leave everything behind that includes work people gallery uh, I've made well, probably six trips here seven trips to this location and I have at least 20 25 what I call keepers Next step is to get them to the gallery. That's where uh, my tech, my wife Karen, takes over from there. She does a minimal amount of work processing to get it to our printer. We do our own printing, everything at the gallery. So all I have to do is come out with what I consider the perfect picture, makes her job easy, she's happy, then I'm happy. Okay, this is week four of my Reflections on the Edge. Uh, it's about the first week of October. Uh, the last one, the week three, was a really good shoot. I had high anticipations of this one being the same way. But sometimes things don't work out the way you want them to. So, yeah, I knew there was something in here that I could get. So... I slow myself down, I sit back, set up my tripod, look around, and just start shooting. And I found some totally different reflections. We had a bright light, had a slight wind, and a whole lot of black and white type images of the uh, the sticks, the twigs, the limbs that's in the water. So a little bit of ripples, a touch of color from the uh, surrounding hillside that were just reflecting in the water. The early morning sun is just popping up. This one, the limbs are lit up with the light. Got a few leaves in the foreground and still got the deep blue color of the sky in it. Look around the edges, since this is all about edges, and look what I find. I find a beautiful little spider web reflecting in the water, a nice uh, sweet gum leaf with a lot of color in it, 
and it's a perfectly calm and I get a really nice reflection close up. Wait a while. When you think you're finished, it's best just to sit around and wait a while. And what happens is a light fog starts rolling in. I don't know if it was the sun hitting the water or what, but it starts rolling in and you get a backlight on a few of the trees in the background. And behind them, you're getting an almost black background to make that image stand out. So I like the way the light is hitting on the ends of the limbs of the willow trees. Brightens up even more as I shift my position, I zoom in a little bit. The water's calm, I get a nice eerie reflection. You get a little more moody shots this way when you got a lot of darkness in your photograph. Again, I back off to allow shadows of some of the trees in the background to lay across the lake. They make little eerie stripes. You got the reflection of the willow tree. You got the backlighting and yet you got the black darkness that just barely allows the tree trunks to show through. So it's kind of an eerie photograph. Yeah, right here. Sorry about that. Got one more coming in. Just I changed my position a little bit. Sometimes you can move a foot in any direction and get a, con a completely different photograph. And this one, it brought out the color in the, uh, the sycamores in the background. And the lighting and the reflection are still there. And last but not least, I get a good shot of a reflection with the deep, rich blue skies showing through. comfortable out here. I like being out in nature. I've always been out. I've lived in it. I uh, grew up on a tobacco farm, the hills and creeks and streams of eastern Kentucky was my playground. Uh, I had a carefree life. We grew everything on the farm. We uh, made a living there and I knew nothing else. So this is like a second home. It's almost like a second life to come back out here and do this. And I've been doing it for 20 years, so I look forward to doing it more. Week five is mid-October and the water starts dropping. Uh, you'll see it in the bubbles in the water. You'll see around the tree trunks where it's showing some darkness where it's coming down and it'll start taking on an icy appearance. Yet mid-October you get the gold colors and the willows showing up which is really nice. Here's one of shot dark. I like shooting dark. You got the dark water where the inversion takes place. You got a, the uh, image of an old tree with its reflection in the water and it kind of starts describing the place we're in. 
uh, I back off a little bit. Sometimes when I take a photograph, I like to back off or zoom in, depending, just to get a different perspective. This one, you're, you're framed by a couple of uh, old trees and you still got the water showing its effects. This one is a vertical, that is a close-up of the willow tree. It's not quite as exciting as zooming in on something or uh, backing off on something. Now we're getting into the light behind its backlit, the willows are, and it's coming across as just golden leaves and the water is starting to take on an icy appearance. This one is a close-up of that. And you'll notice the detail in the leaves, the, the lines around the leaves where the light's shining through. This one is one of my favorites. It's got the uh, water in the foreground. It's got the reflection that shows a great amount of detail, icy looking, and yet you're seeing the backlit leaves of the willows. And this one, one of my favorites is the tree trunk sticking out of what appears to be icy water, but it's only the uh, bubbles and the water itself, the effects from the lake lowering that gives it this uh, appearance. Okay, now we're going to go on to the sixth and final week that I spent out here at the beaver pond. Okay, now I'm going to try something different. I shoot manual. So that gives me full control. I shoot dark and I'm going to purposely shoot a landscape out here. It's got the golden colors, yet yeah, it's going to be a dark background. Just compose, make sure I got the color in it, and shoot. Week six was the final week uh, of photographing the beaver pond. That was at the uh, end of October, around the uh, end of October, first of November. And I found out that the water was rising slightly. Uh, we did find a new place to photograph at the upper end of the lake was this remote cove yet yeah. I think it's going to be covered with water this winter and we may have to go in in the springtime, but it has some great possibilities for abstract or ref uh, reflection shots. Now I did find some reflection shots, a little bit abstract, surreal, yet the light was starting to get harsh. Uh, it was a strong sunlight coming in, it was mid-morning. Yet the sky colors the deep blue was showing through and it made for a nice backdrop for the red colors. I had to take one final shot of my golden colored willows so I zoomed in tight on it and uh, that gave it kind of a surreal image with its reflection on the water. One final shot is the uh, greenery reflecting a lot of the colored leaves had fallen or blown away. So this was what I was left with as my final shot. Something to keep in mind is 
What you're after is your own individual image. It's yours, it's no one else's, and it's yours to do what you want, how you get it. Uh, you gotta be the final one on adjusting the light, the darkness, the composition, uh, even the uh, Lightroom and Photoshop when you get home, however much, however little. Uh, what you want to do is consider that each place you go photograph is literally a gold mine. It's up to you to dig it out sometimes. You may have to wait, you may have to come back again, but uh, ultimately there will be something there. you just got to be patient. Never rush. Take the time to take a few deep breaths when you reach a site. Look around, listen, and just immerse yourself in the environment. So far, I've made six trips to the beaver ponds to capture the fall colors. Now there's three more seasons coming up and it's such a unique, beautiful place that I think I'll plan on spending the winter doing the same thing, capturing my reflections on the edge in the winter time. So thanks and you guys are welcome to join me again.